What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another review of the Amazon All or Nothing doc. Today we are reviewing episode 6, the final of the three. Another three to go for next week, which I literally cannot wait for. Uh, but before I get into that, I just want to let you know about a competition that we're running. It is called Football Survivor and it is your chance to take us on and to take everyone else who's joined on um, on this, this great app really. It's a really good game. You pick a team to win. If your team wins, you go on to the next round. If your team loses or draws, you are out. It is five pound entry and the last man standing wins all the money. It is take it all. Um, Do you get so any lifelines? You can buy extra lifelines, but I don't think you get extra lifelines. Okay, you, you <laughs> buy extra lifelines to stay in, the, stay in the competition. Each Premier League week, you pick a winner and then it's when last man standing takes all the money. So come join us, see if you can beat us and win all the money. Otherwise, we're just going to take all the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into it. Episode six, we've got injuries galore. We've got a great analogies from Jose Mourinho. Mm. Um, we've got Hugo, some more Hugo leadership moments. And you've got that Son injury at the end. Um, but let's start off with that blanket analogy. Um, yeah. Because he's talking about how many injuries we're getting at the time and he's like it's like when you're in bed and you're trying to pull the blanket and your feet keep coming out or another part of your body keep coming out and it's like we can't fill the kind of players on the pitch and the positions that we need because we keep getting injuries mm -hmm. uh, i thought it was a great analogy it was it was a very funny analogy and i think he's absolutely right at the time our injury crisis was so bad and so all these injuries so they're like dropping like flies and obviously the worst one was yet to come but then um you know you have that bit where lamella um pulls up in training and he's like oh i feel some pain here they, you know don't i don't feel comfortable i don't know if i can play and um that kind of that you, you kind of get insight into um, lamella spurs career at that point it's pretty probably like that a lot Literally, which is quite you, frustrating you, you could probably take that clip and put it on repeat and for seven years and that's his uh... <laughs> yeah, it probably is because that's that's, that's the thing people because that's, that's always always what it is with lamella you never hear what the injury is you never hear anything and it's like oh he's gonna be out for a few weeks and it turns out to be like three months or something yeah um and that was uh lamella's um in there and I th you kind of felt you this this episode you start to feel a lot worse for Jose Mourinho mm -hmm. about what the how how the squad is and what's happening because he's just getting absolutely no luck from his from his squad in from an injury point of view every time we get something good um you know the injuries start hitting and we was, this is going into the, into the Southampton game we're just ending the we're just beating City and we're trying to muster up a team together to take on um Southampton in the FA Cup and he was saying, Jose Mourinho was saying how usually how he likes to manage is, um, you know, uh, picks a team for that specific game and comes with a tactical plan. But the way things were going with his injuries, it wasn't about that. He's just, he's just trying to muster up a team just to try and compete for the next game, let alone finding out ways to win. That was what he was focused on. So it was kind of an insight in how Mourinho was trying to manage the squad at that time. Um, and then in that Southampton game, uh, things weren't going that well in the first half. And Hugo Lloris digs into the team at halftime, doesn't he? Yeah. And then you saw the proper leadership qualities of Hugo, like we mentioned from the last episode. But you see it a bit more personified because like, before it was kind of geeing up the players before the game. But this is like digging into the players for not pulling their weight. And I thought that was great to see from Hugo again. Again, he has that commanding authority and that presence in the in the training change room. If he has, uh, if he's seeing a problem, he'll say. And he was saying how, you know, guys, we have five players in, around the box, around one player. Yeah, he gets the shot off. We're not being aggressive. It's not good enough. And he said it's a responsibility of every single player on that on, on in this changing room to be defensively sound, to be aware of what, what of what we're doing, and be aggressive uh, on our play. And I think that's also something that Jose Mourinho says a lot of, of our lack of aggression aggression off the ball and our lack of tenacity and uh, I think I got that's um second balls be yeah aggressive, all, all that things know. he keeps bagging on about them because I think a lot of the time uh, that's that I think that it's a microcosm of not having a defensive midfielder a lot of the time in the center of the park is way too easy for teams to just play through us but we've and we're not it, being aggressive we've said it for a long time we lose this midfield battle time and time again because we don't have an enforcer in there there's no enforcer there's no one with physicality and that's what Hoybier is going to bring to us I'm really hoping for and hopefully that, that's going to solve that problem which is quite exciting because it's something clearly that Jose Mourinho has identified and something we keep banging on about that lack of aggression in midfield and on, the, and on the pitch and when we're in and around the penalty area trying to defend our goal and we've got five players uh, around one attack and he's still able to get a shot off that's a microcosm of that effect 
effect of not being aggressive off the ball. And hopefully, with these new changes of these new transfers in this summer, that can be that can be rectified. Mm. And yeah, so that was good to see Hugo stick um, digging in, and obviously it worked because the second half we turned it around. Yeah. Um, and then it moves on to a kind of spotlight on Ben Davis. Obviously, he got injured on Jose Mourinho's first game, and he comes back around this period. And they're just spotlighting um, how bad the injury was, first of all. And Jose Mourinho talking about how important Ben Davis is to yeah. his team as well, and how how he plays on the left back, and he can he drops into a back three when we're in possession or out of possession. And I thought it was really interesting to see. And then it moves on to Villa away. Um, then Son lands awkwardly on his arm. Yeah, we go into the game um, knowing a win would take us one point behind Chelsea, going having to play Chelsea in the next game. So it was a massive game for Spurs to win mm. at the time. I remember th- at the time thinking how big of a game it was, and we were well in for the race for the top four at this, at this point. I think we won that game. We were one point in it or something. Yeah, well, before that game, we, we were... Four points. Four points. So we, know, but we knew, I think Chelsea had lost. So we knew yeah. that uh, a win in this game takes us a point behind Chelsea in the to the top four so we were well in that race and we so were, we were winning games were so mental at the yeah end. and we knew that if we could and we, we were winning we had a few wins on the trot having just beaten City beaten Santa in the cup we had a bit of momentum going behind us obviously Son falls really awkwardly in the first half but he plays uh, we all know the story he fought in the first couple of minutes I think it was Look, he, he fell, fell awkwardly he fell awkwardly scored the penalty scored that last minute winner um, epic then, last minute winner yeah, yeah absolutely seems. epic last minute winner but the real story comes after the game, really, because mm-hmm. Son celebrating in the dressing room like nothing's wrong. The next day, he goes uh, and meets the physios and stuff, and he's saying, fine, look, I'm fine. I can move my arm. It just hurts a little bit when I do that. And it's a bit swollen. Yeah, and then the physios are starting to get really worried about it, and then they speak to Jose Mourinho, and that that's where the kind of well before bombshell. that Before that, while I speak to Son, they're like... Um Look, they're, 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 they're kind of being laissez-faire a bit about it. Obviously, they're getting worried, but they're saying, look, we'll give you an MRI scan, but someone's like, oh, guys, I can't have a scan. I have to play on Wednesday. Don't, don't, like, you know, kind of saying, don't scan me, because if you scan me, you're going to find everything. You're going to see everything, he said, because he said, if you scan, you see everything. He was actually really worried about it. He goes, I'm needed badly for Wednesday. He knows Harry Kane is out. He knows that he's our main attacking threat, and without him, it shows his passion blunted. to the team. Yeah, it shows how much he cares, and he was so gutted that even just they were going for a scan he was gutted and obviously he, the, the, the physios and the staff the medical staff were just like don't worry you'll be playing on Wednesday it's not a big deal it's fine it's you know most for most outfield players elbow injuries is not a big deal mm. you'll be absolutely fine to play on uh, Wednesday against uh, I think it was Norwich and uh, or sorry against Leipzig in the Champions League I think it was at the time yeah. Leipzig Leipzig <laughs> and um yeah, so that, that was quite interesting how committed he was and how it shows how much Song... We all know how much Song cares, but it's good to see it behind the scenes, how much he's... Uh, when the cameras aren't on, or well, they're on, but behind this, behind in the public, how much he really does care about the team. But what I found really interesting was Jose Mourinho's reaction when he was talking to the physio and he was like... The physio was like, all right, we're going to scan him. And, and he's like, but he doesn't want to get scanned. Yeah, but he, he, said, he said he didn't want. What do you mean he's scanning? He said he doesn't want to. Why are you scanning? Don't scan him. Don't scan him. Don't scan him. He's fine. He will be fine. He plays on Wednesday. Yeah, he's playing you can see he's like you can scan him but he's playing you can scan him it's fine but he's playing he's playing on Wednesday <laughs> and then and then because uh, yeah, also they had that Son uh, they had a bit of a little small interaction where Levy and Mourinho and uh, Son comes Levy and Mourinho having a chat and Son comes out Levy's like oh how's the arm it's interesting to see because Levy seems to have quite a lot of interaction with the players seems mm. to be see, uh, there yeah. a lot you kind of get the impression before that that Levy would probably be in his office a lot of the time and kind of be behind the scenes he's very hands on isn't he's he he's very hands on he's very much in uh, um, interacting with the day by day stuff at Spurs he knows everything that's going on every little injury and everything he's very focused on the, d- the details you can see that so he knew immediately there was something wrong with Son's arm yeah. and everything and he's like you know he goes up to Son hey how's the arm uh, uh, he's feeling out Son's like oh it hurts a little bit but I should be fine um, and leave it and, and just interesting those little bits are, I, I, I like and, seeing and, that. and there was that comment from Mourinho when he was outside the room speaking to the physio about about having him in a cast. He was like, well, I had that injury when I was playing. Yeah, that, was, that was when they first broke the news. Yeah, they broke the news about the injury and Mourinho was going absolutely mental. And he's like, I had that injury when I was playing. We put it in a cast all week and then when it was time to play, knock, knock, you knock off the cast and you go and play. Yeah, I played for months like this. Months! <laughs> and then you just saw the pain yeah, in Jose Mourinho's voice. Because it was kind of like dread because when you first get the Sonic... 
first see Sonny, he's like, oh, it's not a big deal. And then as time comes on, like minute by minute, it just seems like the tensions that like, you feel are getting worse. Like, it's fine. Everyone's saying it's fine, but there's this underlying issue, underlying, um, it's right what's not being said. It's like the underlying fear of like, well, if it's not fine. But everyone's like, oh, it's fine. Everyone's fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Then all of a sudden it turns out he's going to be out for the rest of the season. Jose just can't believe his luck. Just had uh, Harry Kane ruled out for pretty much the end of the season. Had Just had Sissoko ruled out for a long time. Um, you know, just had Dyer, um, another injury to Dyer as well. Lamella's pulled up the, the day before uh, in training. Um, all these injuries coming at a time, but at least he still has Son pulling through for him. But then, out of nothing, out of such an innocuous injury, Son is also ruled out for the rest of the season. And he is just distraught. You can see he's like, he can't believe what's going on. Yeah. He cannot believe his luck. Yeah. And he's saying, he said a very interesting quote uh, in an interview with the Amazon. He was saying, um, he said, Look, you guys, you guys, I need... A you need consistently consistency to develop your way of playing and the only way to develop consistency is to have the players available and when you don't have the players available you can't develop that consistency of a way of playing in the team and that's why and that you can see why he, he was struggling um so badly with all these injuries because we just couldn't deal with uh couldn't develop how he wants to play and you know this documentary or these last three episodes has just shown me even more what I've been thinking that if we wouldn't have got those injuries we would have finished top four I, I genuinely so. believe we would have finished top four and I think it bodes really well for this coming season as well and you can even see with Hugo Lloris he's chatting to the medical staff and he was just yeah. laughing because he couldn't believe that, that our luck another massive injury he and said yeah. you've got a feel for the manager that's yeah. what he said he said ever since Jose's come in it's been boom 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 injury you know, injury one, injury, one injury. Good Result, boom, boom. One yeah. good result, and then we then just win shit. a massive game to go one point behind Chelsea with the momentum behind us after beating City. Things that finally, after the Harry Kane injury, we had a bad period, but again, we found a way to play. Things finally start clicking into place again after after solving that Kane problem, and then our next best player against ruled out for the rest of the season is like, oh my god, yeah, just like come on, come on, seriously, and I really start to feel for Jose Mourinho. And I, I, and yeah, I think it really was a massive, massive uh, problem for him. And you can see he's just on his knees. Like, how is this what happening? What doesn't break you make you stronger? Eh? Yeah, and well, for this this made us all considerably weaker for the, the next season. I'm talking about, but yeah. yeah, and we and we know. We know how things went, kind of. We lost that game against Chelsea and whatnot. We're, uh, I'm looking forward to, to the, the, rest of the final three episodes next week. But um, uh, I, I just feel you can see that these injuries, how hard, how hard they impacted our season. And, you know, with taking Kane and Son out of our team, that's 60% of our goals, pretty much. Yeah, I and mean, don't forget the rest as well. And the rest. Yeah, but but just mainly from an attacking point there, they made a point as well in the documentary with Son and Kane out injured at how much pressure it put on Bergvine and Lucas and our Lamella and our other attacking players mm. to really step and up Ali, and get yeah. goals and Ali as well. But they just they just don't have as many goals as Kane and Son in them. Literally for the past couple of years, Kane and Son are literally sixty percent of our goals. That's how much of an effect they have. And you're forgetting at the time Lucas Mora hadn't scored a league goal that year. Yeah. And he was being, and he's playing up front for us, and he's just and that not a striker. What, this is what February, March, or something. Yeah. So, so he, he hadn't scored a Premier League goal in like two, three months, which is a massive problem. And you know, I know it's you know, it's all well and good saying you know, City, you, you know, they have they have deep squads, Liverpool have deep squads, and whatnot. And they do, but imagine in January, Sterling and you know, Sterling's out for the whole year. How they deal not, with that? No, imagine at Liverpool. Yeah, this is the same thing. Mane, and, Mane and Salah are out injured for, for the whole for year. Next, for, yeah, exactly. For the whole year. If you do that, Liverpool definitely they might not even finish top four. Well, I don't know about that. It's, but you know, it's not be all the realms of possibility. Look, half of their goals come from Salah and Mane. Yeah, but they were so far ahead in the league at the time. Yeah, but I'm talking about. In a in a situation where they're not so far ahead, kind of thing. Yeah, if they're playing, if 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 you're playing, yeah, you know, it's well well and good, like Liverpool for the odd game, uh, rotating Mane and Salah and leaving them out and then dealing with it and winning the game. But having no Mane and Salah for a whole half a year, and just imagine that, and and, and imagine the strain that I put on their team and how look much at, take, how much quality that takes out. Look at Arsenal for God's sake. Never mind their two top players. Take their one top player, Aubameyang, out. They would have got relegated last season. Literally, that's how that's how much they rely on some some teams rely on some players, 
and you've got to really feel for Jose. Uh, first, in the first place, he doesn't have the, his squad, and then the, the players he does have available, his two best players are injured, and he's really even before Son's injury, he was saying how he was saying how he's just putting out a team to, to try and compete because we're just so lacking numbers and we're just so injury struck. And then that injury comes, and he's just like, "Well, fucking hell!" <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like it just can't really get any worse. Yeah. And that, and 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 that's what I think a big reason why we failed to get over the line for the top four because I think by the time uh you know the 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 restart came along we actually our form after the restart wasn't bad but we we're just too far back mm. at that time to try and catch up yeah uh well anyway that concludes the episode six and then i think we'll just end with lucas mora we're talking about lucas mora a bit yeah uh, there was loads show. about it showed a bit of the human side of lucas mora yeah. he he uh surprised that fan at that the, the uh, stadium tour brazilian fan who apparently who uh, he's a brazil fan but his hero is lucas not yeah. neymar or anyway it's lucas well, good yeah, on him. It, was, it was just a nice little little bit about lucas mora it was just a feel-good thing and how much he loves the champions league and how fondly he remembers that night in amsterdam he yeah, he sleeps with that ball he said yeah. hey, he looks that ball <laughs> all the time and uh he how he's gone and down in spurs folklore as of that yeah and i was loving the commentary i'm not sure where that commentary came from from the ajax game when they showed it but it said when when lucas mora scores that goal it was like lucas mora becomes a tottenham legend yeah. i don't know where that commentary is from yeah i don't know i'm not sure i'm not sure where it's from but anyway that concludes our review of episode six I am so looking forward to the next three episodes, the last three episodes, which will bring you the reviews for next yeah, week. Yeah, this one ended just as the Leipzig game was kicking off, mm -hmm. so we get to see everything uh, in regards to that. And then so obviously we're going to go into lockdown in the, the next, next few episodes. In the next few episodes, or the next episode, we'll see a lot of negative things, I think. Well, yeah, so because we're going on a really bad run. Obviously, we've got the Chelsea game, the Leipzig game, and then we go into lockdown. But so we what I see want to mention that. before we end is, um, what I find very interesting is that our record signing at the time Tungi Undombele has yeah. not featured once in this documentary we've seen true. him we've seen him once walking away from the buffet yeah. and we've seen him another time giving Tanganga a high five or something and like it, that and it was interesting because Jose was actually talking about Tungi at the time uh, when uh, when all this happened because he obviously at Southampton I think he had his first start in a while and I think he got, he got taken off early like half an hour or so and got injured and he was and also was this around the time when Tungi was saying he was fit but he was fit enough to play but he didn't feel like he could can play mm. because of something like that and then Jose had a few digs in the in the media saying how but um, none of this stuff's coming out in the yeah doc. he didn't say didn't, 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 this is not shown at all in the doc about how um, Tong, uh, he was saying about uh, he doesn't like players who um, he likes players basically who play through injury and giving everything to the team and even like Lamello saying I can play 15-20 minutes and he likes that from players and not like looking Sonny yeah and he wasn't saying that for about Ndombele and stuff like that so uh, he was, and also saying how Undomele is constantly injured and stuff. This none of this was uh, mentioned at all. And like you know, considering as well, he's our record signing, and they made a big deal about earlier in the doc. We we made a record signing. They haven't mentioned him at all in yeah. this documentary. So I don't know what that what that means. Um, maybe they're just leaving out because it's all too negative. Who knows? But Undombele is, is he's as missing in the doc as he has been this all this season. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Anyway, that concludes episode six review. Let me know in the comment section below if we missed anything or if you have any thoughts regarding anything we've mentioned. And also, I just want to reinstate about our competition, Football Survivor. Link in the description below of how you can join our competition. £5 entry, winner takes all. Lead code in the description below. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.